Hello everyone, this is Marcin and in today's video we are going to talk about another panel in new camera which is Curve. It shouldn't be as difficult because on my channel I already talk about Curve adjustment layer in Photoshop and this is pretty much the same. So let's start what we have here. Once we open this uh, curve adjustment layer, we can see this big box and inside of this box, we can see the histogram that we talked about before. So we can see how the pixels are distributed on the image. We can see that majority of the pixels is dark. We have quite a lot of pixels just over here in the mid-tone range and the lights range, but we do not have many pixels in the highlight area and I can see it on the image. I don't have really strong highlights over here. So this is when it comes to RGB. And on the top here, we have a few things uh, we can do. First of all, we have this option to work in parametric curve adjustment layer. I'm going to skip this at the moment and I'm going to focus on the regular curve that we are more familiar with. So this was RGB and after that we have red channel and in this version of camera we can clearly see with which light we will be working because it is important to remind that curve allow us to work not with the colors, but with the lights, which is red, green, and blue. So if I would drag this curve higher to the top, I'm adding to my image the red light and going to the bottom, I'm taking away the red light and also making image a little bit darker in this case. So going up with the curve, I'm making the image brighter. Going down, I'm making this darker. Then green, if I will go up here, I will be adding the green light, also making image a little bit brighter. And down, I'm going to take away green light and make the image darker. And this is the blue light and of course, the same as before. We can see some of the small differences between the histograms when we compare red, green and blue, the histograms are slightly different because the lights are distributed in a different way. So when we check the blue channel, we can see that we have quite a lot of blue pixels in the light area. And that could be easily explainable because we have sky over here. When it comes to the greens, not as much, a little bit darker greens over here, probably some on the skin as well. And when it comes to the red, this is like this. So if I'll be moving these curves also on the top, we can see that the relation between the channels and also the histogram is actually changing. So as I'm increasing the red light now, as you can see, we can see on the histogram that the red light is moving strong towards the highlights. If I will be taken away, as you can see, the red light is disappearing over here. So it's worth to look at this histogram on the top when we work. Actually, always, when, whatever we do with camera, it's worth to look at this histogram on the top and see how the relation between the colors change. So RGB allow us to work with three lights all together. So if I'm going to grab this curve and move higher, I will make the image brighter, down, darker. Now I don't change the color at all because this RGB curve is all of the lights connected. And as we get all lights connected, they give us simply white or black. So they give us light, or the darkness. And using this, we can work in many different ways. So for example, starting from this side, let's say I want to make the shadows brighter. I could grab this curve here, and as you can see, move it up so I can make the shadows brighter. If I grab it here and go down, I can make it darker. And on the other side, as you can see, in the opposite way, I can lower the highlights to the complete darkness and also I can 
make Nelly complete brightness over here. It's really powerful when we need to adjust the contrasts very selectively, though it might be not as useful when we need to do just raw conversion for future retouch in Photoshop. I'm not a huge fan of adjusting the contrast perfectly before the retouch is finished. It can be also useful when it comes to color grading when we want to mix the lights to achieve some special colors over here and this is not something I would do on this level and when it comes to curve adjustment layer in camera I believe there are much better tools in camera that can be used for the raw conversion but um, let's see how it could work increasing the contrast I could go here make the shadows a little bit more visible Increase the contrast here and just to make sure that the highlights are not too strong, it could go this way. So now we have a little bit washed out and also increased the contrast on the images. If we would like to make this image a little bit warmer, what we could do, we could add some red light on the shadow area. Also take down some of the blue from the shadow area and if we want to give some more nostalgic effect, we can take down, take away some green from the shadow area. When it comes to the highlights, I would add this because I want to have visible uh, sky. For example, I would add some of the green as well and take down from cyan. So this is really strong effect and not a huge fan of this. Don't get me wrong, but we did something. So let's reset this. I'm going to hit right and reset all channels. And now different type of curve. This curve, parametric curve, which seems to be a little bit more basic because it will allow us to understand every move we do. So we have this uh, few different blocks. We have these few different stop points over here and in the shape of these balls. And they try to show you the distance where is the certain area of the pixel so from this ball to the maximum left side will be the shadows which is all on this slider between these two is the darks between this and this here is the light and over here is the highlight so for example if i want to increase the highlights as you can see, mainly I would be affecting this small area where we don't actually have that many of the bright pixels. If I would go with the lights, as you can see, I'm directing a little bit more all this region over here. And the darks and the shadows in similar way. As you can see, I can manipulate with the curve whether I want to brighten this up or darken this up. And this actually can be very useful when uh, it comes to adjusting some basic light. So I said I'm not a huge fan of uh, doing any work with curve adjustment layer, especially when it comes to the point curve. But when we need to correct some of the shadows, working with these sliders could be very helpful. And it's really important to notice that we can manipulate ourselves with the wrench we want to affect. So let's say I move these stops and I want to make the shadows a little bit brighter because it's dark. And also maybe darks a little bit more to this level because I have a lot of dark pixels but not that much of the bright ones so I feel I should actually add some brightness to this area, add some light to the shadow area. And when it comes to the highlights I think it's absolutely fine. I don't want to add more light to not overdo it. I could maybe add a little bit of the lights, but I feel still I could overdo it. So one thing I would do, just add some light to the shadow area and dark area to brighten up these dark pixels. So as you can see, um, something very basic, not complicated. And this is all you have to know about curve in camera. Next week, we are going to talk about the another panel that we have here. 
and in few days we will have another tutorial on different subject. Thank you for watching. If you want to know more, check the links in the description and also leave me a comment what you think about this video and what you want to see in some other tutorial tutorials, uh, whatever is related to Photoshop, Lightroom, Camera, or even Capture One. I will be happy to know your opinions. Thank you and see you next time.